there are many myths about Jesus. In these programs, we're talking to some experts who can help us get at the facts behind the myths. We've already met the myth that the Bible's accounts of Jesus were made up and altered during a long period while they were passed on by word of mouth. According to Professor Richard Borkham, the accounts bring us much closer to the historical Jesus. They're based on the testimony of people who saw and heard him, of eyewitnesses. And my view is, um, very simply, that the eyewitnesses, the people who knew Jesus, who were there when things happened, who heard his teaching, um, these people were still around right up to the time when the Gospels were being written. Um, and the us usual dates for the Gospels, I not disagreeing with most scholars as to the dates of the Gospels. Um, so I don't have to bring the Gospels earlier than usually dated in order to say this. Um, the usual dates for the Gospels mean that they were being written around the time when members of that generation were beginning to die off. So they're being written around the time when these people were still available um, to, to tell their stories. And uh, these are people who were well known in the early Christian communities. Some of them were leaders, missionaries, traveled around the churches. There was lots of opportunity um, for people who were going to write gospels to uh, interview them, to listen to them and, 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 and so forth. So there's really actually no historical problem about supposing that the gospels are written on the basis of how the eyewitnesses told the story. Um, either at first hand or maybe sometimes at second hand because we do know that some of the Gospels used uh, to some extent written sources um, but my argument is that the, the Gospel texts as we have them um, would be really very close to uh, the way the eyewitnesses told the story. So would Jesus's 12 apostles have played a key role in handing on the stories about him? I, I think the the people in uh, uh, in the most important role as guardians of the tradition would have been the Twelve Apostles um, because at the beginning of Luke's history of the early church in Acts um, we're told how uh, the church took some trouble to um, fill up the vacancy among the Twelve Apostles that was left by Judas who had defected and committed suicide. Um, so there's actually a space left that they need to fill um, and the qualification for, for becoming uh, uh, one of the Twelve Apostles um, is said to be those who were with Jesus from the beginning and right through to his resurrection, people who had met Jesus after his resurrection. Um, and there are evidently a few people who would qualify for this, but the one they chose, uh, Matthias, um, uh, was one of these people who would accompanied Jesus through the whole story. Um, so they're very concerned about uh, the role of the apostles as witnesses. Um, and I think the natural conclusion from that is that the 12 apostles were in a way the, the, official, uh, the official witnesses who probably in the early days um, gathered um, testimony from other people and uh, created a, a cycle of official uh, traditions about Jesus. Um, and these, I think, would have been uh, the core of what we've got in Matthew's Gospel, Mark's Gospel and Luke's Gospel. Um, but then there would have been other people who would have uh, added some material. Luke, I think, very likely draws on the women disciples of Jesus who are very prominent, unusually prominent in Luke's narrative. Um, so they, the, the Gospels would have supplemented uh, the official tradition of the Twelve from other sources, but they would have been the, kind of the backbone uh, of the tradition, I think. If the witnesses were still alive and still telling their stories when the Bible's accounts of Jesus were written, what does this mean for what we know about him? If I'm right about the eyewitnesses, um, if the way the eyewitnesses told the story is uh, uh, quite close to the way the Gospels have, have provided it for us in a, in a written form, um, I, th I think it means that uh, the kind of picture of Jesus we get from the Gospels um, it has a good chance of being a very, very reliable one. Um, of course, in history, nothing is 100% certain, um, but these are, these are good circumstances un under which to assess the sources as, as reliable. Um, so I think the, the, um, the, both, both the sort of detail of what Jesus did and, and said, and also the, the overall 
uh, picture of Jesus that that comes out of the Gospels. I think uh, uh, really goes back to the to the people who actually knew him, the people who were there when he was teaching, um, who were there when he healed people, um, who were there when he fed the five thousand, um, who were there. Some of them were there when he was crucified. Some of them were there at the baptism uh, at the um, at the empty tomb. Some of them were. Uh, some of them met Jesus after the resurrection. In fact, most of them would have met Jesus after the resurrection. Um, so I, I think I think it just gives us a very good basis for for reading the gospel stories as as trustworthy accounts. The myth is that the Bible's accounts of Jesus were made up and altered during a long period while they were passed on by word of mouth. The fact is that the witnesses were still alive and telling their stories when the Bible's accounts were written. Next time, we'll look at more evidence for eyewitness testimony in the Bible's accounts.